Hello and welcome back to another video of Circuit Digest. In this video, I'll show you how we can build an MPPT solar charge controller like this one. So this MPPT charge controller here can be used to charge your lithium batteries directly from solar panel with maximum efficiency. So what it does is that it monitors the solar panel output voltage and based on that it controls the output voltage and current to charge the battery. This particular MPPT charge controller here is based on the LP3562 solar battery charger IC and we have designed it to charge a 2P2S lithium battery with a charging current of 600 milliamps. We will discuss how the entire circuit works and also test the circuit in real time. But before we get there, I would like to mention the manufacturers of these shiny yellow PCB boards PCB GoGo. PCB GoGo provides high quality PCB prototype, PCB assembly and PCB layout services. Recently, PCBGOGO has also launched the great sale for Christmas and New Year. Throughout December and January, every day one lucky winner will get free PCBs and this year they are also providing some exciting coupons of up to $155 off. You can find more information about this using the link in description. Also follow PCBGOGO on Twitter to get more Christmas giveaways and gift cards. You can also scan this QR code to know more. Coming back to the circuit diagram, the main component is the LT3562 power tracking IC which you can also find on the board over here. The circuit has two input power sources. One is from a DC jack connector and the other is from the solar panel which you can connect here. So this is the DC jack connector to which we can connect an external DC adapter. The circuit is designed in such a way that the solar panel will be disconnected from any power source available if the DC connector is used. The purpose of having this DC connector is that we can use it when the energy from the panel is not so good. So on a gloomy day if the panel is not providing enough power we can connect an external source to charge the battery. The 1N5819 diode here is used as a reverse voltage protection diode. So if the adapter of any wrong polarity is connected, the diode will protect our circuit. Moving on, here we have an input filter capacitor of 10 microfarad used for filtering the noise and here we have a voltage divider in form of a potentiometer which can be used for setting the MPPT value. On the other side over here, we can find three more resistors which is used to set the battery voltage based on the resistor value. You can make this circuit to work for different types of battery packs like 1S, 2S or 3S configuration. Here we have used it for 2S battery but the formula and explanation on how to change the value of these resistors can be found at the link given in the description of this video. Moving on to the bug boost regulator section here. So like always our regulator has an inductor of 68 micro Henry and two scotchy diodes, one over here and the other over here. And it works like a typical bug boost circuit. Another interesting thing to note here are these resistors which are the current sense resistors. These resistors are used to set the battery charging current. The calculation is given over here. I is 1 by R parallel to R sense resistor. So we have our R sense resistor over here on the circuit and on the board you can see it over here. So by changing the value of this R sense resistor, like if we use 1 ohm, the charging current will be 550 milliamps. If we use 0 0.5 ohms, it will be 650 milliamps and 0 0.33 ohms for 750 milliamps and 0 0.22 ohms for 800 milliamps of charging current. Moving on, we have few more capacitors as a combination of electrolytic and ceramic capacitors for output noise filtering purpose. Then we have the charging and fault LED. The fault LED is used to indicate any fault during operation and this is our fault LED on the board. It glows based on the value of the timer capacitor which is this 1 microfarad capacitor. Basically it sets the time before when the battery should, charge, should start charging from the panel. If it happens before this set time then yellow LED will be in off condition else it will turn on to indicate a fault that the battery is not charging which might be because of a faulty battery or if the panel is not providing enough output power. One important thing to understand here is about setting the MPPT value. The set voltage over here is 2.8 volt. Whenever the panel is connected, a voltage will appear across this port. The driver IC should know when the solar is in maximum power and we will provide that by controlling the potentiometer. Then if the solar energy drops, the controller will adjust its charging voltage based on the value that we set earlier. 
So this is our final PCB with all the components soldered. Here is the inductor and here is the potentiometer to set the MPPT value. This connector is for solar and this is for the DC adapter which is optional. So we will connect our solar panel here during our testing. Here we have few other components and the connector for battery and two LEDs to indicate the charging and fault condition. Next we will take this to rooftop and test how it is working. But before that I should mention that I fabricated this board from PCB Go Go. You can also easily use their services by getting into their website pcbgogo.com. Make sure you have already signed in. Then over here enter the dimensions of your PCB. Say mine is 50 cross 50 cm and the number of PCB I need is 5. Then for me the number of layers is 2 and thickness is 1.6 mm. Click on quote now and you will be taken to the next page where you can change few more properties of your PCB. On the right side you can see the build time and price you have to pay for the PCB and shipping. In my case let me select India as country and change the shipping method to China post. Now as you can see the price gets updated and it's only $5 for all our 5 PCBs. What's more interesting is that you can change the solder mask color say to yellow in our case and the cost remains the same. Mostly you can leave these values to default and you should be okay. Then click on add to basket and you will be taken to another page where you have to upload the Gerber file for your PCB. For this project you can find the Gerber file at the link in description. Just click on add to Gerber file and upload the Gerber file of your PCB. Then proceed with checkout by entering your address and making the payment. Within few days your PCBs will arrive at your doorstep. As you can see mine was shipped in a neatly labeled box and the PCBs were also packaged and shipped safe. The quality of the PCB was good as always and I proceeded with soldering the components and testing the board. So here we are on the rooftop with our testing setup. The sunlight is at the maximum brightness now. So we will set the MPPT value by changing the potentiometer here. This will inform the driver IC that it is the maximum power we can get from the solar panel. The multimeter on the left shows the current drawn from the solar panel and the multimeter on the right shows the charging current of the battery. I am adjusting the port till I see maximum values here. So right now the charging current is 0.27 amps that is almost 300 milliamps and on the input side we are drawing about 240 milliamps of current from the panel. So now as the sun gets more brighter you can see that the charging current increases. Now it's almost 380 milliamps and now it starts to move down as the sun intensity goes down. So once the MPPT value is set, the driver IC will automatically switch the output side to charge the battery in maximum efficiency based on the available power from the solar panel. Now as the sun gets more brighter, you can see that the charging current has crossed 500 milliamps. Now again it has dropped as the sunlight goes down. So that is it guys, this is how the project works, hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.